in this video we're going to be looking at the public private partnerships PPPs and they've been popular since 1997 so when Tony Blair came into power now there are loads of different types of policies which come under or policies or whatever you want to call them that come under this heading PPP but I'm just going to talk to you a bit about four and then I'm going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of having these policies. In essence, what PPP is, it's trying to bring together the public sector and the private sector for bringing about change in our built environment, for bringing about new roads, for new houses and so on. So the first method is partial privatization. This is when a business or an industry or something is privatized but only partially. So 50% of the shares might be sold off or 39% any amount it really does not matter and that means that the company is partly owned by the government and it is partly owned by the private sector so it's partial privatization another one is con uh, contracting out this is when you get the private sector to do jobs that the public sector should do and so this could be like um, private schools private health care um, uh, I'm trying to think there's from private roads you have don't you so there's other those kind of things contracting out where you're getting the other sector to do some things as well so you do as well you have state schools stuff but you also have private schools so that number of people go there less burden on the government another thing is um, competitive tendering um, this is where private firms bid for the right to uh, provide these services so if it was going to be like a new healthcare service all the private firms around 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 it and the contract is awarded to the firm which has the best deal not just for the consumers you might be surprised to say this has to have the best deal for the government so this might be to do with tax or something or a way in which the government is going to benefit from this as well uh, the fourth, which is the most common form in the UK and that we're going to look at in more depth in, in this video, is PFI, Public Finance Initiative. Now this is where the private sector will build the roads, houses and things, so just like contracting out, they'll build it. But then, rather than they do it, they charge, they run it, they lease it out to the government. So the government um, is paying them, in essence, to do this, but over a longer period. So that 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 those are the four types. Now, why why on earth are we even looking at this PPPs? Why bring the public and private sector? You know why? Well, the point is is that the private sector is more efficient. Workers are motivated. They're better in terms of pricing. They have specialists on board. They have quality choice, and they provide a greater service to the consumer. They have more consumer welfare, and this is why the government seeks to use the private sector because it knows that the private sector can do a better job than the government can and also sometimes the government can be too conservative and the private sector can be too i don't know extravagant adventurous so by bringing these two together you get innovative ideas and that's one of the advantages of having a ppp you get innovative different solutions to problems and you know different designs so now let's look at some of the advantages of why this exists because clearly if there were no advantages this wouldn't exist well the private sector has specialist firms so they can have lower costs they can have and they're going to have higher quality and they and generally they have specialists and they know what they're talking about or they can subcontract out and stuff and they're way better at doing this than the government you know the government is too large to be able to be doing this and you know to a certain extent it suffers with diseconomies of scale and also then the government it doesn't need to worry about construction or organizing the construction because if you're going to construct something you need lawyers you need surveyors you need x you need y you need it the government doesn't need to worry about it the government just needs to worry about when and where do i is my payment due and i'm going to pay it that's all the government needs to worry about um the, as i mentioned before innovative new methods you're going to see different types of things coming about the balance of both sectors it's different um the government can make more changes uh, as they can spend more so you're not spending like 3.9 million on a school in two three years period you're spending maybe 1 million um no you're probably spending 3.9 million again but probably over three schools and you're gonna have to keep paying over um, a period of time so that means you'll see more change in the environment people are happy you know consumers are happy that's the main thing and also uh, one of the disadvantages we'll look at more detail later on is about profits that these private sector firms do make 
But this is an advantage because the private sector, when they make the profits, particularly if they're large, this is extra business for them, is um, adding competition to the market. And they're going and they're spending the money, which is having a wealth effect, which is good. It's a positive effect. Then they get to recruit more people because they get to make more stock. And, you know, so the cycle continues. So it's good in terms of long term economic growth. The disadvantage is the government can easily overspend because you can spend and make more changes in the short term. But in the long run, what you don't realize is that your costs end up becoming huge because you've just been paying a little, 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 and then you pay, 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 and you can just easily overspend. You say, ah, just another million. But that means a million times, God knows how many years the lease is, and you don't realize. So it's easy to overspend. And because government is only in power for five years, they get dragged on. They, they Things just get pulled on and they don't really care about it it's not even cost effective to be honest in terms of monetary value because if the public sector firstly does not negotiate the price properly then they make large profits these um, private firms but not just that the it's not cost effective because in the long run it tends to be more expensive than if the government did it themselves um, and the profits that these firms make they could have been going to the government but then again, by doing this way, you don't need to raise ta um, taxes in the short run and lose your sort of party power. Uh, another disadvantage is the service can be inadequ inadequate because private firms might want to cut costs and buy cheap quality um, construction material or whatever. Performance targets, even though the government might set them, you can fail to meet them. It's not a big deal, so I don't really see in that sense why... Um, it's, these targets are really going to help with making the service adequate because it's not going to be the same than if the government did it. Uh, there's reduced incentives for the firm to deliver. So the whole point, as we discussed above, of having the private sector do it is because they're motivated work workers, they do a better job, they're more efficient, but there's reduced incentives to be efficient and have these um efficiencies because when the contract is written it's written in such a way that the firm doesn't need to it probably has backup plans that if they leave halfway the government will continue the project or so on something 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 because the risk is less it's less riskier uh, yeah i was saying before that there's not cost efficient because oh, sorry it's not cost effective because it's more um, expensive for the government in the long run. But also, this is an interesting point, if a government wants to borrow money to create something, it can get it at low interest because it's a stable and safe risk. Whereas if a business wants to do it, it's high interest because it's a high risk. And the government is basically, in essence, whichever way it does it, is going to be paying for the project. Either it's going to be paying it through rent or it's going to be paying it through a one-off payment, build this. And if they're doing it through the PPP, what they need to pay is this higher um, interest, which they wouldn't have need to pay if they did it themselves because it's less um, high the interest for them. And also cutting costs. Private firms might just re reduce wages and not treat workers properly, not do the health and safety because they're just trying to get this done with. So it's not all that great. Um, I hope this video helps. Please visit my blog.